key influences impacting on sales. So let's start by looking at the influences on sales. What is it that determines sales? Selling is a, a frontline activity. It involves a sales team. The sales activity involves face-to-face -face direct contact with customers. Not always the case because of nowadays we have selling online and we have selling over telephones and so on. But in more traditional settings, in shops for example, uh, we are dealing with a person. And we'll try and keep that focus. We'll try and look at it from the perspective of dealing with a person in a shop. So it's a frontline activity involving a sales team. And it involves face-to-face -face interaction with that person. To some extent, dealing with people on a telephone or online mimics what happens in the face-to-face -face situation and with ever-increasing sophistication in communication systems uh, clever programmers are coming up with ways in which we have the same feeling, we have the same relationship except it's not face-to-face -face. it is through the medium of let's say the internet. But by and large the approaches, uh, successful approaches for example in face-to-face -face, will to some extent be, be copied in other uh, approaches, in other ways. So for example um, friendliness and uh, a capacity to generally chat for a few moments about the weather or about some issue or whatever, uh, which breaks the ice before they, they get down to making the sale. And we have the same type of situation arising now online where uh, we're approached online and people just generally make some general comments and, and then get down to the sales. So we have um, similar approaches to some extent but here it's easier to visualize it in the context of a shop dealing with people and dealing face to face. The selling process is important as this process has the most influence on customers and the buyer decision making. So the selling process is very important. It's very important to know how to approach the customer, how to make the customer feel at ease, find out what the customer's needs are and then try to address the needs by indicating appropriate products. So it's not just a question of approaching the customer and asking him or her what he or she wants. It's a question of trying to determine which product is best for the customer. There are forces and influences that shape or impact selling and the, the sales management. So there are forces that impact on, on these. Um, the major influence includes managerial and environmental factors, say behavioral and technical. Um, it's important that the, the sales team are familiar with the managerial expectations that's on them. What does the management require from the sales team? And also, what's the environment in which they're working? What sort of products are they dealing with? They must be technically aware of the products and be able to answer customers' queries uh, without hesitation. They must be familiar with the issues and they must be able to empathize with the customer. They must be able to relate to the customer's wants and understand what the customer is talking about and what the customer needs. So there are influences that impact on the sales team and these influences must be addressed. The sales team must be capable of addressing these issues. Behavioural influences are on the sales activity. Well, as customers adapt to the changing environments, sales activity must also adapt in order to meet customers' changing demands. Well, customers are changing. Our requirements are changing. We have different levels of expectations about products and the durability of products and the appropriateness of products. We may even be concerned about where the product was made and its environmental credentials, if you like. We, we may be interested in those issues. So it's important that the, the sales team are familiar 
with all aspects of the product. The following factors must be taken into account. Uh, the increasing customer expectations and demands. Well, we have increasing expectations. As time has gone by, we have more information. Uh, we're more familiar with the law as, as applies in uh, commercial dealings. We're more familiar with the environmental impact that products make. Um, we, we have customers' rights and so we have increasing expectations about the product and we want value for money. So it's important that the sales team are aware of this and that the customer not just gets the product that he or she wants that's most appropriate but the, pro the customer must also feel that they've had a good deal. And the customer perceptions of the buyer-seller negotiation, they must understand what the negotiations are, they must understand what's been said, they must understand at the end, at the conclusion, at, at the point of sale, that they, they feel satisfied, that they've had a good deal, a bargain, as I said earlier. <clears throat> there is expanding buyer power. There's more information available for buyers. Um, the information is in consumer magazines, in uh, online uh, blogs and there's more information about retailers and good experiences and bad experiences. So with an increasing amount of information available, the onus is on the sales team to be able to uh, present a good case for the product and for the sale. It's the onus is on the sales team to be able to answer the questions, make the customers feel at ease, and enable the sale to take place. There's also issues, and it may sound vague, but issues like globalization are important. Um, where does the product, where was it made? And if it goes wrong, what after sales service is available locally? Or will this product have to go halfway around the world to be fixed? if it goes wrong. Uh, these issues need to be addressed. And also in the context of globalization, how was it produced overseas? What were the working conditions like in the factories and were people exploited as a consequence of making the product? So it's important that there is clear information on the part of the the sales team and be able to answer these questions. Now increasing customers expectations and demands. Well the increasing needs of customers and their expectations poses challenges for the sales team and negotiations. Customers expectations are ever increasing. They want products which are good value for money, that they're durable, they're fashionable, they are presentable and they will do the job specifically and do it well. Customer expectations are fueled by even better products and better quality. Customers expectations keep rising once their needs have been met. So once once customers have had experience of a product and they've had good experiences of the product, however once that has happened their expectations will increase. They'll, they'll want even more the next time they'll expect the product to have been improved. So if someone has a, a vacuum cleaner which worked really well but now they think it's time to have a new one they'll expect the new vacuum cleaner to work even better. And that applies to virtually all products. When we have a car we're happy with the car but when we go to trade it in we expect the new car to be even better to have more functionality, more gadgets, more durability, better fuel economy and better performance. We expect, we expect, we expect, we expect a lot and expectations are ever increasing. As organizations grow they must set new standards of excellence. This has an impact on salespeople as they must plan for product quality, value and customer services. Continuous improvements in quality standards. 
the the drive for quality is now fairly well established within the managerial psyche. Managers now place, place more emphasis on the need for quality products and customers know this and customers expect the next generation of product to be a better quality than the previous one as I just said earlier. But th this means that the sales team needs to be able to communicate this and be able to demonstrate what they mean by better quality. Not just simply saying it. There must have some support, some evidence and then perhaps some videos of the 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 appliance working or uh, the product doing the job or or some testimonials from past customers who bought the new product and were extremely satisfied with it. Now the customer perception of the buyer-seller negotiation. Well, marketing tactics used by salespeople, um, the tactic is important in the buying process. Customers, customer changing perceptions of the sales team has changed. The, the sales team are no longer simply people working in the shop who will point out the product, get it wrapped up and take payment. The sales team now must supply information about the product. They must allay any issues or fears the customer has about purchasing the product. They must be able to answer a wide variety of questions about the product. and these must be honest and accurate answers. Marketing techniques such as negotiations and, and high pressure sales tactics are no longer an effective strategy. So trying to in a sense trick the customer into buying the product or persuading the customer that the product is somehow wonderful when it's not, um, these tactics no longer apply. Customers have rights. Customers uh, have information. They may have researched the product before they enter the shop. They're familiar with the downsides as well as the upsides of the product. They know what its issues are and what its faults are before they even make the purchase. They're aware of this. What they want to know is, uh, in terms of overall quality of the product, what support is available, what's the price of the product, what discounts are available. Um, they want to be able to speak to someone, uh, a fellow human being, and get honest answers. Customers prefer the option to choose and to be allowed to make their own decisions in the buying process. They don't want the sales team to say, this is the product, in a sense you must have this one they may say no we don't want that particular model we want a model which is less than that one because we don't have the demand for, for this product we'll never use all that functionality we just want quite a basic product or we want extra functionality in this area or we don't like the style of that product could we have one that looks a bit different and given that the customers are the people who are going to hand over cash or money or resources and who have had to work perhaps to, to get that cash or that money or the resource to buy the product, they are the ones who have the right to say what the product should be. And they don't want to be talked into buying the next one up or they don't want to be talked into buying insurance for the product. Perhaps that's unnecessary. They're already they have already perhaps have statutory rights so why buy extra insurance so it's important that the customers are listened to forceful sales tactics and negotiations are a deterrent the the sales team need to adopt appropriate strategies that will develop a better relationship between the seller and the buyer not trying to force the sale and and make people feel the need to buy this product. It is it's important that the people buy the product 
in a sense voluntarily they they want to buy it because it satisfies their need they don't want to be talked into this they don't want to be persuaded that they need the product and then to buy the product and to take it home and to realize later that in fact they didn't need it or they didn't need that particular specification it's too sophisticated they needed something less perhaps so forceful sales tactics can be counterproductive it can be a mark against the organization the expanding buyer power um, the buyers uh, have had a profound effect on sales and sales management uh, the power of the buyers has increased immensely over the years uh, buyers are more aware of the fact that they have limited budgets and they must try to maximize the the benefits they get from their expenditures and there's also an increasing amount of information available to buyers so that they have uh, more capacity to read up about the product and understand the product before they actually make the purchase and the sales team must try and meet the changing demands that the the customers have and the sales team must keep up to date with what's been said about the product the sources of the information and the competitiveness of the product the price of the product the demand uh, that the customers project has an influence on the way that the marketers operate they uh, and their growing demands put pressure on organizations to change their marketing strategies so the marketing strategies are not constant they're not as they were in the proverbial old days marketing strategies now must recognize the customers as sophisticated individuals who have an awareness about the product about their own requirements and about what's available in the market in general so the onus is on the marketing team to facilitate the purchase to answer questions and to try and guide the purchaser to get the product that they want even if the product they want is not the the top of the line most expensive one it may be that talking to the customers a lesser product one with f reduced functionality is better suited to their requirements so it's a question of marketing honestly that is going to be the, m the most productive route the buyers purchasing power mean that they have the opportunity to demand services that suit their needs they may be that they want the product just in time they want it just when they're ready to have it not before they want it delivered on a particular date at a particular time not before not after just at that time is that possible and it's the onus is on the marketing team if they say yes to ensure it happens the customers may have special status because of previous purchases and the previous relationship with the the organization uh, it may be that there's some sort of funding promotions that uh, buy now and get a special discount or uh, because of their status as previous purchasers they get extra uh, discounts or that sort of thing and also looking at the distribution channels how will the product be moved from say the store to the customers home uh, will it be delivered by by van, by special courier, uh, when will it arrive and what can the, the person expect from the, the distribution. And also we have globalization. Now this may seem um, somewhat irrelevant in the context of what we're talking about and, and seem somewhat uh, too generalized. But in fact, globalization has allowed businesses to expand and grow in terms of sales and profit. Globalization is 
the capacity for of businesses to sell in markets overseas and thereby gain economies of scale, economies of size. And it has, however, challenges in terms of culture, lifestyle and language barriers. So customers need to be dealt with in a way that uh, recognises they may have different cultures, different languages, different understandings of what the product is or what the product does or, or how useful the product is. So the onus is again is on the sales team to try and meet the customers uh, on their terms, meet the customers, understand the, the, the cultural differences, understand the languages and try and get sales through recognising the differences. So globalization poses challenges for the sales team and the, the global sales teams. There needs to be better coordination and cooperation in cases where the company may operate on a global scale. If it does operate on a global scale then extra training is required for the staff and extra facilities are needed to accommodate differences across national boundaries. Sales teams need to take into account that globalization requires uh, different terms of sale, different technical support perhaps, pricing and product customization, all of which will be a reflection of the different approaches to buying and selling in different countries. Uh, there has been quite a lot of debate, for example, in the UK about contacting companies for, let's say, after-sales services only to be routed through to a call centre in a different country. And then they are dealing with uh, personnel in the other country who do not understand, let's say, UK culture. They do not understand language and the nuances of the language. So it's very difficult for the UK customers to get satisfaction. They want to deal with somebody who understands them. Now that's an issue of training and if the company wishes to engage in globalization support and globalized selling they must accommodate uh, different types of customers and accommodate them precisely. Influences on sales, well, the technical influences. Technology plays an important role. Uh, technical advances require the sales force to adopt and integrate technology into their sales activity. Uh, it's often the case that salespeople will access databases during the course of negotiations or discussions with customers. They'll access the database and find out what's in stock and where it's in stock and the delivery date. Uh, the prices, up-to-date prices and, and so on. Now in the past, prior to the advent in this type of very fast response technology, uh, the sales team would have to work with perhaps out-of-date information, information which was published let's say once a week and come through to stores once a week and was, hold, was held in a, in a binder beside the till. Well, that's now going or gone. Now, sometimes customers can check themselves to see what is in stock. Uh, they can check the specifications of the product online and they can then make the purchase online and go and pick it up from the shop. So they have completely bypassed the sales team because of technology. The following influences need to be considered. Um, Salesforce uh, automation. As I said earlier, increasingly people may purchase online, have it delivered online, pay for it online, and that's the first time they've seen the product. Or it could be that they buy it online, read about it online, re read reviews about the product online, and then go and pick it up at a shop. It's uh, pay and collect. Or it could be to go to the shop and go 
look at the product, physically look at the product, uh, test the product, talk to the salesperson, and then make the purchase. But the chances are the purchase will be entered into a database, which is no different to what would have happened had the person bought it at home. There are virtual sales offices, as I said. The virtual sales offices are just shops online. And many stores uh, have this facility. But also many companies can now open their own virtual sales offices. The company that makes the product may also have outlets, online outlets, to sell the product. Electronic sales channels are important. Uh, how is the product portrayed online uh, through major outlets like uh, eBay or uh, Alibaba or perhaps it's, it's major outlets um, through big producers, recognized producers who are advertising and marketing the product and doing part of the marketing work online. Salesforce uh, automation. Well, the Salesforce automation are software tools which enable salespeople to if, uh, efficiently carry out tasks. Information can be easily exchanged, such as invoices, purchases, um, delivery reports, and promotions. Uh, in fact, once the data is entered, uh, the the programming behind the scene can fill out various forms and uh, get the whole sequence of delivery in in train, get it all set up. Um, so it, it's, it's a very efficient way of making sales. Laptops, computers, mobile phones, fax, well fax is more or less in the past, but fax machines could be used. Email, advanced technical software, these help the sales team with tasks such as planning, recruitment, selection, evaluation of sales personnel. Um, so the the whole process of mechanization go into can go into training personnel for face to face dealings, uh, but it could also present virtual shop fronts and make sales online as well. Technical developments allow for video conferencing, um, especially communicating to global sales teams and head offices. Um, it's very important that sales teams are able to talk to each other and understand each other and have meetings so that they're able to coordinate their approaches uh, within national boundaries and over national boundaries. That the product is seen consistently by customers. So to do that, the sales team may use teleconferencing, um, may use uh, all sorts of tools, communications tools, to make sure that everything is up to date. The virtual sales office. Well, technology, uh, technological advancements have allowed for the development of advanced software. Uh, software developments have been uh, immense over the last probably 10-15 years and are increasingly complex and increasingly more sophisticated which enables the sales forces to have up to the second up to the minute information um, but also are able to call in support and are able to give accurate information to the customer Sometimes, as I said, the customers may be able to access that information directly themselves. Software has allowed for the development of virtual offices where salespeople can work from home or in remote locations and still keep in contact with head office and work as a team. It's, it's ironic that many cities have traffic problems because people need to get to the office. They need to get to the office to sit at a desk, uh, perhaps working on a on a ter computer terminal or on a on a PC or on a Mac or whatever, 
uh, when they could have done it at home saving the planet because less congestion less pollution saving traffic problems and also being more efficient they're not getting into the office tired so why people still have this nine to five mentality is difficult to to say it seems to be related to the need for management to control and management seems to be uh, obsessed by measuring inputs the the person's input to make sure they're working nine to five uh, perhaps it would be better if they move towards measuring the person's output because after all it's the output that is important the techniques uh, the technique is cost effective saves time and offers some employees job satisfaction so the employee may feel the the salesperson may feel that they have accurate information they have support when they're wanted uh, they're able to bring it up very quickly answer any questions interrogate the system find out where the product is the price the specifications when it can be delivered and give very precise answers and do a booking and, and a sales with that in mind straight away and that is a big selling point the electronic sales channels well the internet is a new medium for electronic sales channels I say new it's, it's been around a long time uh, but in terms of what was around before it is relatively new uh, you've only got to go back maybe 50 60 years when sales were were almost primitive it was uh, kept on on paper and uh, ledgers and people went into shops and took what they had and customers were weakened at the time because they didn't know much about the product they had to accept what the salesperson was saying so the internet is uh, as a sales channel it's cost-effective method and reduces the sales team's numbers people may do the research before they enter the shop they may read up about the product and uh, read the forums and see what people have said about the product and what what went wrong and what went right with the product and get people's stories and accounts of using the product and then go to make the purchase encouraging online sales means that the sales team can focus on bigger orders uh, take part in research and development and invest time in other developments so for routine products the information is available online uh, many customers will research it online and will have decided to buy the product or not even before they enter the shop um, this means that the sales team have less to do so the sales team may now start to uh, be used for other purposes to look at ways in which the product can be presented uh, the looking at the feedback from customers and writing reports about what the feedback said and what the customers ideally want and feeding this back to the company for future developments but also of course is the case that as customers become more aware of the products and do their own research before entering the shop they're taking less sales time so perhaps there's just simply less sales people required television is another sales channel for example home shopping where sales uh, are encouraged products are promoted by the sales team as presenters and people phone in and buy the product so the product is presented on television and then people phone in buy the product and get it delivered now the influences on sales well managerial influences management can employ new strategies and tactics to deal with changing environmental conditions for example they can introduce direct marketing techniques they could contact people directly and try and make people aware of the product uh, care has to be taken here is not to in a sense spam people to contact them when they don't want to be contacted 
So it might be best to wait for for customers to enter the shop or into the sales area and then make the customers aware of the variety of products that are available. But the, the managerial team should make communications between sales and marketing and make it better, make, make the two uh, complement each other. The sales personnel will, keep, will pick up information from the customers directly and it should feed that through to marketing so that marketing is more aware of what customers want and that comes through from the sales personnel. Management should make sure that the sales people of course are ideally up to date with the product, are adequately trained for what they're asked to do, uh, they're polite, courteous, well presented, well spoken, um, courteous as I said. So the onus is on management to ensure that the sales personnel uh, are in a position to be seen as professional, trustworthy, reliable and that projects onto the product and onto the sales itself. Introduce direct marketing techniques as I said earlier well the use of direct marketing techniques such as direct emails and telemarketing as a means of incorporating technical advancements well in one sense it's it's useful but in another sense it can be very counterproductive. There's a big movement against direct emails particularly unsolicited emails when people haven't signed up and suddenly get emails about something that they didn't ask about that's spam and that alienates purchasers that turn against the company. The same with telemarketing um, cold calling just calling people randomly and asking them about products alienates the customers from the product. They don't want to be interrupted. They're about to have perhaps their evening meal or, or talking to a member of their family or they've got some medical problem in the family and the telephone rings and someone wants to talk to them about a product that they didn't ask about. Now that can alienate customers and get the company a bad name. There's a growing use of kiosk systems in place of salespeople. The technology ensures that customers can easily access information about products and its features. It's, 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 it's customers doing their own research, finding out about the products themselves and uh, companies making that available in a manner that is accessible and making sure that the uh, a customer who's accessing information perhaps online will be able to access all of the information about the product so the onus is on the producer to make sure that the the site let's say a website has appropriate links and it's well structured and well designed and it will answer the questions and present the product in a positive manner So this ensures that the customers have more control over the buying decision. They don't have to deal with sales negotiations. They enter uh, an online uh, site. They're able to interrogate the site. They're able to ask questions and read past experiences and look at the prices and look at the delivery and look at the quality of the product and. Um, see pictures of the product, able to rotate the product, change the style of the product and then make a decision. And there's no pressure on them to make the decision there and then. There's no salesperson standing in front of them waiting for them to say yes we will buy it. And there's no guilt if they just turn off the, the site and go and do something else. Whereas in a shop they may think this person needs the commission. Develop better communications between sales and marketing. Well, the relationship between sales and marketing can be poor due to a lack of communications. It could be that the salespeople are in a sense cut off from the marketing people. The marketing people try to present the product in a positive light and try to find out what the customers' needs are and try to address the needs. The 
salespeople are trying to sell the product. There may be uh, miscommunications or, or uh, no communications between the two. Utilization of intranets is an effective means of communications between departments in an organization. <clears throat> the sales personnel should be able to report what customers say about the product, the questions that they ask, what are their concerns, and report this back to marketing so that marketing can devise strategies to deal with those questions and those issues. Intranets develop relationship between employees, managements, customers and suppliers. So having uh, networks, these are important tools because information can flow around the tools which will uh, improve marketing. It will mean that the salespeople who have direct contact with the um, uh, with the purchasers, they're able to pick up firsthand what the purchasers are saying. And it's important that uh, all the information flows in a manner that improves the whole buying situation in the long run. Salespeople can access information about products, latest news, um, price updates, and sharing of information. So it's important that the salespeople are kept in the loop. They know what the marketing sections are thinking and what they're doing and what the latest campaigns are and what the products coming out are and what the the image of the company that's been projected, the achievements of the company, the reputation of the company. Salespeople can access this and they can build it into their um, their, their, their selling points within the, the point of sale with the customer. They, they can talk about the company fluently, they can talk about what the company is doing currently, the products it's making and what people are saying about it because they're able to pick it up from intranets or, or from uh, online publications put there by the marketing section. Develop better communications between sales and marketing. Well, the relationship between sales and marketing can be poor due to a lack of communications. That's what I've been saying earlier. It's important that the two link up because the sales personnel will have information that will be useful for marketing. And likewise, marketing will have a better overall picture because of their own research, their understanding of the market. They will be able to help the salespeople anticipate questions and answer the questions. The, utiliz the utilization of intranets is an effective means of communications between departments and the organizations. It's important that there is proper communications between the various departments. And these can be used between management, customers, suppliers, intranets and good communications uh, flows are important right across the organization to make sure everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet. Everybody's saying the same things. There's no contradictions and there is no ambiguity in the message. And the salespeople can, of course, stay up to date. That's the, the point. Offering training and developing opportunities for salespeople. Well, salespeople need to take part in training and developing opportunities and continuous professional development. It's important that the salespeople are up to date with the product and with the latest selling tactics the latest ways of dealing with customers and understanding the increasing sophistication of the customers and treating the customers with respect. It's important that these are reinforced through regular training events. It's important that salespeople are fully trained and have the right qualifications and training in the sales field. It's, it's a professional activity. It's not just something that anyone can do. This is something that uh, the salespeople have to be trained and trained effectively to be able to manage the situation in which they find themselves. They need to be able to adapt to changing needs and expectations of the customers. 
they need to be trained to be flexible. They need to be trained to listen, to understand, to empathise, and then find solutions that addresses the the buyer's wants and needs. So these are some of the key influences impacting on sales. Uh, it's important to go back over this video, look ahead slowly and make your own notes and pad out your notes with some additional reading. It's an important area because uh, essentially a lot of companies require salespeople to deal face to face with customers or to deal with customers as individuals and to treat them with respect, understand their needs, their requirements and to address those in a way which gives satisfaction to the customers so the customers will become repeat buyers. But That's all I'm going to deal with in this one so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.